All right, today we're going to take a look at the stiffness matrix for a frame element. Here we go. What do we know so far? Well, we should be familiar with the axial stiffness for a truss element. So here we have our stiffness matrix being rewritten for a truss element. Then we go ahead and take a look at our transverse or rotational stiffness. And we learned about this for a beam element. All right, so we have right y1 y2 those are our shears and we have m1 m2 that's our bending moment here's our stiffness matrix that we have for a beam element and all we do is just combine to create the frame stiffness matrix here is our frame element two nodes we have the axial loads just like you would have for a truss element but we also have the transverse loading and the bending that you would have in a uh, in a beam element. And so we just kind of combine this all into a six by six stiffness matrix. You can see we wrote in the truss element portions of the stiffness matrix in so far. Now we'll go ahead and write in all the beam portions, the transverse and rotational stiffness. And of course those are coupled, so that's why we have four there, where we just have just one, or just, just four just for the axial direction there. All right. And everything else is just zero. And that's it. That's our frame stiffness matrix, except for the fact that we, well, we just have this in the case for uh, an element that's purely horizontal. What happens if we need to orient this? And so we'll take a look at how we handle a rotated frame element. Here's our frame element. We'll go ahead and write that in there. We have what we did before was our stiffness matrix in the elemental coordinate system. That was the, what we did on the previous slide. All right, what we want to do now is we want to determine what our stiffness matrix looks like in the global coordinate system because that's the portion that we can combine to figure out what our total global stiffness matrix is. And so in order to do this, we just apply the transformation matrix exactly the same thing as we would do for our truss elements in two dimensions. And so we have our transformation matrix for the frame element, which is very, very similar to a truss, but it also includes the rotation component. But including that component is actually not too bad. All right, there's our rotated frame, uh, yeah, pardon me, a rotated frame element, rotated by some angle, beta there, right? We can see that we have our elemental coordinate systems shown as well as our global coordinate systems shown. And here we have our elemental coordinate system there. And here we have our transformation matrix for the element. And there we have our global coordinates here, all right, for, for those displacements. Note how it's almost exactly the same. The only thing that we also included was this one here. And this one over here, and that corresponds to the fact that our rotation in the elemental coordinate system, well, it rotates about the exact same axis as our rotation in the global coordinate system. So there is no transformation that really needs to take place. It's exactly the same. That's what that one represents, and that's true for the first node as it is for the second node, which is why we have that one down there. All right, so that's our transformation matrix. We'll go ahead and write out the same transformation matrix just in terms of notation. We have that is our displacement in the elemental coordinate system. That's our displacement in the global coordinate system. That is our elemental transformation matrix. So we're going to use this notation that we have here on the next slide. So we're going to use that to transform our frame stiffness matrix in the elemental coordinate system into the frame stiffness matrix in the global coordinate system. This is using that prime up there. Let's see if we can get it up there. There, That prime that indicates the elemental coordinate system. And so we can go ahead and write our elemental stiffness matrix equation in the elemental coordinate system as follows, right? All these stiffness matrix equations have the same form for static analyses, F equals K times displacements. Loads equals stiffness matrix times displacements. We're going to go ahead and make a substitution here that 
our forces in the elemental coordinate system are the same as the transformation matrix for that element multiplied by forces in the global coordinate system. And we're going to make that same substitution which we saw on the previous slide for our displacements. So that's, that's all we did here. We just made those substitutions. And the final thing that we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and bring that transformation matrix over to the other side. And this gives us our stiffness matrix for the element in the global coordinate system. And it's the exact same thing that we saw for truss elements when we looked at how to handle the stiffness matrix for a truss element when it's oriented at some angle other than perfectly horizontal. That brings us to the reflection questions. First reflection question is, which portions, which rows and columns we should ask of the frame stiffness matrix correspond to the lateral stiffness, lateral and bending stiffness of a beam element? Next question is, how does the transformation matrix for a frame element compare or differ to that for a truss element? And the next question is, how is the transformation matrix used to convert the stiffness matrix of a frame element from the elemental coordinate system to the global coordinate system? And that concludes, oh, we got one more question there. I thought that was it. And the next question is, why do we want to convert the stiffness matrix for a frame element from its elemental coordinate system to the global coordinate system? Okay. That concludes its presentation on this, the stiffness matrix for a frame element in two dimensions.